Hey lovelies, so you know fall is here because the weather is getting a little cooler, the leaves are starting to change color, and I am wearing plaid. And that can only mean one thing, it is time for some comforting soup recipes. Today I've got three creamy comfort soup recipes that are really, really tasty and all pretty easy to make, so there is a lot to love. Just before we get to our tasty soups, I wanna remind you that all month long, we are offering 50% off our 12-week specialty meal plan bundle over on healthymealplans.com. These meal plans were created by our in-house dietitian to be nutritionally balanced. They've got a ton of great variety. And the best part is they can be fully customized to suit your personal taste. So of course there is a lot to love. All the details are linked in the description box below. You can use the promo code EATWELL to access your discount. Now, without further ado, let's get to some creamy, comforting soups, starting with this amazing rustic white bean soup. As always, I am working in my nice big soup pot on the stove. If you don't have a soup pot like this, might I recommend you invest in one. It's one of the best kitchen spans you will ever make. I have linked a couple of my favorites in the description box as well if you're looking for one. I've got my soup pot heating up over medium high heat and I'm going to start by browning up some bacon. Now, if you didn't wanna use pork in this recipe, you could use some chicken here instead but obviously bacon lends a ton of great flavor to this recipe. I'm going to cook my bacon just until it starts to crisp up, and then I'm going to add the trifecta of amazing soup ingredients, some onion, celery, and carrot. These are all total classics when it comes to soup. I'm going to cook those just until they start to soften, so maybe three to four minutes. And as soon as they start to soften up and that celery turns bright green, we can go ahead and add some garlic to the pot as well. Once that garlic hits the pan, your kitchen is going to start smelling even more amazing, if that's possible. And that means it is time to get a little white wine in here. Now, if you wanna skip this step, you definitely can. You don't have to use the white wine, but it adds a ton of beautiful flavor. And then I'm just gonna let that simmer away for two to three minutes. That gives it time for the alcohol to evaporate and all you'll be left with is this amazing flavor. At this point, it's time to add our beans to the pot. These are cannellini beans or white kidney beans. I'm using canned beans that I've drained and rinsed. Once those are in there, we can add our chicken broth to the pot as well as a nice splash of cream. For even more great flavor in this recipe, I'm using some rosemary, some thyme, and a bay leaf. In addition to those amazing herbs, we are going to be amplifying the flavor factor by the power of 10 using a Parmesan rind. So if you've never used one of these in your cooking, you are in for a total treat. Basically, when you buy a piece of Parmesan, you grate it until all that's left is the rind. What I do is I hold on to these, keep them in a zipper bag in my refrigerator, and when I'm making a soup like this, I pop the rind right into the soup and it imparts the most amazing, savory, cheesy flavor into whatever you're making. The next step is just bringing this mixture to a boil and once it's reached a boil, we can go ahead and pop a lid on our pot, reduce our heat to medium low and let this just simmer away for say 15 to 20 minutes. It doesn't take very long for this to get really, really super flavorful. So what I like to do is just use a slotted spoon to sort of lift out our sprigs of thyme and our bay leaf. They have done all the work we need them to do, which is lovely. And then you have the option to serve it really chunky and rustic like this or to use an immersion blender like this to get it a little smoother. When you're working with an immersion blender, you wanna make sure that your heat is totally off and that you have it fully submerged at all times. Otherwise, you can get dangerous splash ups. I'm doing a bit of a half puree here, so I want it to be nice and thick and creamy in texture, but I also wanna leave some of those ingredients intact. At this point, we can finish the soup off with another helping of freshly grated Parmesan cheese and some freshly chopped parsley. What is not to love about this soup, guys? I like serving it up with a little bit of fresh parsley and a nice side of crusty French bread. For all you mushroom lovers out there, have I got the soup for you. This is a creamy garlic mushroom soup. It's essentially a classic cream of mushroom soup, except with a really garlicky kick. I've got my soup pot heating up on the stove, and of course to that I am going to add some butter. As soon as that butter is melted, I am going to load in my mushrooms. Now, you'll see, it looks like we have a lot of mushrooms happening here, but as you know, mushrooms lose a ton of their volume while they're cooking, so a lot becomes little pretty quickly. I'm using a combination today of some cremini mushrooms that I've thinly sliced, as well as some shiitake mushrooms. I like the combination of mushrooms here, but if you only wanted to use creminis or white button mushrooms in this recipe, that definitely works. 
Once those mushrooms hit the pot, we'll season them up with a little salt and a little pepper, and then we'll let them cook down for between five and six minutes, stirring them frequently until they start to brown and release a lot of their moisture. And then it's time to add our garlic. Now I'm using three cloves of garlic in this recipe. That is a lot of garlic, so if you wanna dial it back a bit, you can, but it's creamy garlic mushroom soup, so feel like you need the garlic. We're gonna let that garlic heat up for maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then it's time to add a little flour to the pot. The flour is going to help our soup thicken up while it cooks, but it's important to cook off that floury taste first. So I'm going to cook my flour for maybe a minute or two while stirring it constantly so that it doesn't burn. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my mushroom broth to the pot. If you have trouble finding mushroom broth where you are, you can swap in some chicken or beef broth here as well. Both will work, but of course, mushroom broth has a really great mushroomy flavor. Speaking of flavor, I've got two more ingredient additions that will add just that. A little splash of soy sauce is headed into this soup as well as some fresh thyme. We'll go in and get the sprigs out afterwards, but in the meantime, <laughs> time, they are going to impart a ton of beautiful flavor. I'm also going to add a good helping of cream to this. Now you could do this with milk, but we are talking about fall comfort food cooking. Just use the cream, enjoy the cream. I'm just going to bring this mixture to a boil and as soon as it's reached a boil, I will reduce my heat to low and let it simmer for maybe 10 minutes or so. That's really all it takes. Now, you have a couple options. You can serve the soup chunky just as it is, but I actually like to give it a quick blend to help it get nice and thick and rich. But I also want to preserve some of that great texture of the mushrooms. So what I like to do is just use a slotted spoon to sort of lift out a good helping of the mushrooms and we're gonna add them back in once we've smoothed everything out. As far as an easy weeknight soup option, this one really can't be beat. You can prepare the entire thing in under 20 minutes on the stove. Finally guys, when a chill hits the air, nothing will warm you up quite like this amazing sausage, kale, and gnocchi soup. And you're not gonna believe how easy it is to make. It starts once again, of course, with a soup pot on the stove and just heating up a little bit of oil. Once our oil is nice and hot, we can get some sausage into the pot. I am using some mild Italian sausage. You have the option to use hot Italian sausage if you wanted to. What's cool is that the sausage itself has so much flavoring that you don't need to add very much to it to make it delicious. Now I have removed the sausage from its casing and I'm just gonna use my spoon to break it up while it's cooking. I wanna get it into little bits. As soon as that sausage is cooked, we're gonna add some onion to the pot. We'll let that cook for another two to three minutes. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add some garlic to the pan. And I'm also going to add some red chili flakes here. Now, these are totally optional. If you are not into the heat, you leave the red chili flakes out. Next, I'll go ahead and add some chicken broth to my pot as well as a splash of cream. We'll bring this mixture to a simmer, reduce our heat to medium, and then we are going to get our gnocchi into the pot. So gnocchi is basically a potato-based pasta. You can usually find it fresh in the deli aisle at your supermarket or frozen in the freezer section. It's really pillowy and delicious. And the cool part about gnocchi, if you're not familiar with cooking with it, is when it's ready, which only usually takes two or three minutes, it's going to rise to the top of your pot. And as soon as you see the gnocchi start rising, that's how you know it is time to add your kale, which is only going to require a few minutes to wilt down. You could also use spinach if you wanted to. That would work definitely in this recipe as well. Then I'm gonna hit this with a little salt and a little pepper. And guys, you will have a soup that you absolutely love. I have to tell you, this has become my husband's new favorite. I hope you'll give all three of these yummy recipes a try. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all three of these tasty recipes are being featured on HealthyMealPlans.com so you can find them there. And we're also offering 50% off our 12-week meal plan bundle this month only. If you want to take a look for it, I will link the details in the description box. The promo code is EATWELL. Finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.